Well, hello guys, how are you? Man, it seems like I just can't get anything done in the time I want to get it done anymore. I don't know what it is about this summer so far, but it just seems like I can't I can't get to the projects that I want to do. And I know you're no different, that's normal. Um, I even need a haircut, I can tell that. But anyway, things here in Kansas have heated up. I mean, for June it has been hot, and that's the way it seems like it's been the last couple years. Um, we've gotten a lot of heat early, and then it used to be like, you know, July and August were just hot, hot, and then it cooled down. But last couple of years, it's like June has gotten really hot, and then the rest of the summer's gotten more mild. Um, we've had a lot of 100 degree days here already this at this point i remember in as a kid early to mid 90s um there was one summer there we we had like at least 30 straight days of 100 degree plus temperatures which i know for some parts of the country that's no big deal um, but here in kansas pretty unusual pretty miserable and now enjoy this little snippet of my life. Well, hey there, guys. I hope you're bored because this may be just pretty silly. But as you may or may not know, my home shop here is a big old granary, probably put up in the, I don't know, 20s, 30s, 40s. And whether you know about granaries or not, they had to have airflow where they stored the grain. So they had a center aisle with cement that they pulled the horse drawn wagons into, and then they unloaded into the wooden bins. So they had to have airflow underneath the wooden floor to keep the grain dry. And I've already blocked off with cement block the other side um, I get so sick and tired of skunks and possums and stray cats and armadillos and on and on it goes um, going in there making a mess stinking up the shop so this summer I hope to get the north side floor blocked off and uh, there's some things that might be interesting under there that I'm going to pull out. I doubt they're really worth anything. Um, so, like I said, I hope you're bored to come along for this. But uh, let's go see what there is.
Okay, I warned you guys. I hope you were bored. This here would have been the big money item if it was any good. Unfortunately, it's just been out in the moisture way too long. Can't even really tell what it is. Maybe mobile, but uh, don't know. Blue lettering, white and red. Oh well. Piece of junk now. Good old Kerr self-sealing trademark. Mason. Yes, sir. Boring generator bracket. Prince Albert. The best find is the armor spice lunch meat with natural juices. Oh, there's an old Chevy AC spark plug. Cool. All right. Well, hope you had fun. Suckers. So now for a little humorous story. Um, long story short, cousins were out spending time at grandma's, so our kids were over spending time with them. And my middle son uh, discovered this fawn out in the trees, and I'll play a little video here of that. Um, this was me taking the video a couple days later. Um, and According to my wife, who's pretty infallible in these things, um, I don't know if this is whitetail specifically or about any deer, but um, a doe will hide her fawn somewhere, and the fawn is born without scent. Um, so she'll hide the scentless fawn in the trees or grass or whatever, and then she will go a short distance away and sleep during the day. Since she has scent, predators would be more attracted to her and likelier to leave the fawn alone because they can't smell it and they don't know it's there. Well, my middle son saw this little little guy sleeping in the trees and so we were all oohing and aahing over it, you know, whatever. Um, having to keep the kids from touching it, you know, so the mother wouldn't abandon it or anything. And we saw doe in the area um, here at work. I've been, as I walk along outside this shop I'm in right now, you know, I would scare a doe up out of the trees and she would run off in the field a little bit or whatever. So I'm pretty sure that's her. She's, for whatever reason, she trusts us with her fawn close to the house over there um, that we were of no threat. Um, it's a safe place. There's no dog on the yard or anything like that. And so it was just kind of neat. Well, the kids were concerned it was abandoned and that something was going to have to be done with it. No, and we we're like, no, the mom's taking care of it. Don't have to worry. Well, I think on Tuesday, that was on uh, Saturday or Sunday when they found it. And on Monday or Tuesday was my, our, youngest child's, our girl's um, birthday, and had a UPS package here at work that I needed to take to my in-law's house because that was my daughter's present from them. Came in last minute on UPS. And so I took it over there on my way home from work, had it under my arm, the box, and I hear this sound. And the, the engine of my the diesel truck was running. It was windy outside. I hear this whimpering, and I'm like, oh, great. That fawn is still here, and it is abandoned, or something happened to the doe. And now we have to figure out what to do with a little fawn. And I kept walking towards the house, and I... Oh. It eventually I figured out the sound was coming from the pot the box I was carrying because it ended up being this pet thing this electronic cat saber-tooth purple blue whatever so 
anyway, long story short, I thought we had an abandoned, abandoned fawn on our hands, and it ended up being the robotic cat that I was carrying in a box. And uh, we had seen the video I took was a few days after that yet, so they're both still around. Um, I don't know if they've moved on by now. Animals actually do cover quite a bit of territory, more than we realize. Um, but anyway, that, that kind of made me chuckle. Now, as for comments, the one that really stuck out in my mind was from last month's Humble Mechanic video that you're watching right now, or, you know, the previous month. Someone said, I didn't subscribe to sit through a sermon. And there were a lot of things, a lot of responses that flew through my head after reading that, none of which I put on. I just kind of ignored it. But I decided to have a fun little, have a little fun with it and do this instead. Take it away, David. Yeah. All right, let's do this, ladies and gentlemen. The category for tonight, the top five responses to the comment, I did not subscribe to sit through a sermon. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> Number five, here's a corner. Call someone who cares. <laughs> Number four, surely you're not serious. I am, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Number three, I'm going to continue until they change it to conformity tube. Conformity tube. Yeah. Conformity tube. Number two, sorry, you're the one guy I forgot to consult. <laughs> and the number one response to the comment that I didn't subscribe to sit through a sermon. You walked in here by yourself, buddy. Nobody dragged you in. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes these ideas come into my head and I just run with it. I'm sorry. Anyway, let's get into the devotions part. Yes, I am absolutely going to continue doing this. If you came here, you are here for a sermon, I guess. Um, because we're riding in on the coattails of Father's Day, I decided to put off what I was going to talk about with you and instead focus it a little bit on that. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may well go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. I'm a little late in doing this, but better late than never. A lot of guys look up to athletes or any manner of more famous men who are in the spotlight and make heroes out of them. The problem with this is that, other than a few exceptions, they have terrible character and incredible egos. Okay. This is an odd example, but it came to mind as I was typing this. But I recall back in the days of the old Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky, Lewinsky scandal, you know, when I was but a young buck, that some guys had the opinion that Bill was the president after all, and he should basically be able to get away with whatever he wanted. No... He was the Ahab, I mean president, and therefore should have held himself up to the highest standard of morality because the rest of the world, from kings to children, were watching him. All of that to say that my heroes have never been such men, but rather the ordinary guys around me in my life that could seemingly turn their hands to anything. It has always been a life goal of mine to be that kind of man. I grew up out in the country near a small Kansas town, the same area that my forefathers moved to and settled when they came to this country years ago. My mother was the youngest of five children, and her family lost their mother to a stroke about ten years before I was born. 
I'm not sure if this was the motivation, but all five sibling, siblings ended up staying close by to their dad the rest of their lives. Now that I think about it, we all lived within a four-mile radius of each other. You can imagine the constant family gatherings and the huge passel of cousins involved. My father was the third child of four siblings, and the other three were sisters. Oh, lucky dad. These siblings spread out a little bit more, except for our family, of course. We stayed right there at the home base, at hometown. So, on one side of the family, I had a grandpa, who was born in 1914, by the way. That seems crazy to me. And uncles that grew up on the farm and knew all about that kind of stuff and hunting. And two of them even owned their own ultralight airplanes. So, a lot of fun going on. And on the other other side of the family, my dad's side, I had my dad and my grandpa, he was born in 1924, who both grew up in town but had worked with the family business of automotive mechanics their entire lives. My grandpa's dad, having left the farm as a young man, he started his own mechanic shop in town to work on these newfangled horseless carriages, and he expanded it to include a Chevrolet dealership parts counter, machine shop, two gas stations, and a lumber yard. That was my great grandpa. So I was fourth generation mechanic. I grew up watching my dad go from building our house and hanging drywall to rebuilding old engines and repainting my first car. And there have been other men in my life as well. I think of Mr. Stuckey, my junior high math and science teacher and football coach. Mr. McGee, Mr. Potter, and Mr. Carnes, all who taught me at Salina Area Tech School, and Mr. Stout and Mr. Green, two of my instructors at McPherson College. All of these men saw the value in hard work and in passing on a legacy to the next generation. Unless you're, unless you're new here, you know that I highly value things from the past. Like one of my favorite verses, Jeremiah 6.16 says, This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask for the good, where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. I consider myself very blessed indeed to have grown up surrounded by the examples of men that I was given. Not only were my grandparents and parents good people and hard workers, but they were righteous men and women as well. God always came for first before anything else. None of us were wealthy, and I doubt I will in ever inherit much to speak of. But that matters very little to me because I was given a far greater inheritance than money can buy. I was given faith, righteousness, and knowledge in working with my hands. And I think of you guys watching. We have some ladies out there and some younger bucks sprinkled in here and there. And I'm so glad you're here. But mostly you fellas out there watching are of my dad's generation. I started this channel unwillingly. I felt it was something God was leading me to do. But yet I absolutely did not want to do it. I'm a quiet, introverted kind of guy. Yet you guys are my are my motivation for continuing. You have been so overwhelmingly encouraging and supportive, and I want to thank all of you as well. I've had the honor of meeting up with a couple of you, and if any of you ever see me out and about, never hesitate to introduce yourself. Now, if any of you are watching and you didn't grow up with a dad or any good kind of father figure, maybe you are a dad. Maybe your life has taken such a turn and you find yourself a stepdad or a step-grandfather and you don't know what you're doing. All you need to know are two, th two things. First, you treat those children just like you would want to be treated. All the things you wish you could have had in a dad. Maybe you didn't have a good example. That's what you do for those kids. Everything you wanted, everything you felt you needed as a kid, that's what you give them. And secondly, get in the Word and you will soon develop a pretty clear picture of who God is and how uh, He wants us to live. That's how you start to live. 
and that's how you start to conduct yourself and you begin to pass that on to the children in your life. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And I would expand that to your entire family. Don't come home and start demanding things. And don't come home and just check out mentally. You're not an eighth grader coming home to mommy. You're an authority figure. You're looked up to and your wife and family are depending on you. Be the leader and provider God created you to be. Well, I think that is just about going to cover it for this month's installment of The Humble Mechanic. If you ever have any questions or comments for me, please don't hesitate to put them down there in the comments section. Email me directly. It can be about any of the projects, what I'm talking about here, um, even more personal things, don't hesitate to ask. If I don't want to address it, I'm not going to do it, you know. Now, if you're just downright indecent or it's ridiculous or stupid or whatever, first of all, don't bother. But, you know, you know if it's something that I want to address, you're curious about, you want more information on, I have no problem getting back to you if you want me to talk about it here in this format great I can absolutely do that um, just let me know and I thank you so much for joining me today um, what else can I say got the little 350 for the 86 out there um, I also found a <laughs> we went through the um, the Edelbrock carburetor for the 327 that we're putting in the 86 GMC. I am rebuilding and making a video on the Quadrajet for one of you guys and uh, one of the little throttle plate screws broke. You know they're so tiny and they get deformed when they peen them over. Um, so I had to go scrounging around for a replacement screw. Couldn't find any in my screw uh, my hardware assortments um, so I went up in my storage loft there and lo and behold I found a Rochester uh, quadrajet an older one that would have had the bimetallic choke spring um, so I've had a quadrajet for that project all along so I probably won't do another quadrajet rebuild but that may show up for that project um, instead of the Edelbrock after all. So I guess I'll be rebuilding another carburetor. Anyway, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, thanks again. I think I was already closing. Thanks again for joining me. God bless you guys. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I hope you're having a great summer. Um, Looking forward to better things coming in this country and the world. Anything would be better right now. And God's doing it. Don't you doubt it. Bye-bye.